So I decided to go to the Goodwill outlet, AKA the Goodwill bins, and I found these Air Force Ones sitting in the shoe section. So any old Air Force Ones don't catch my attention, but these have an older shape and they say Chi-Town on it. So they're probably about 20 years old. And strangely enough, I found them in Virginia, not Chicago. I only paid about $3 for them because they were at the bins and they're giving me Nissan Altima with the broken hubcaps and faded paint energy, neglected with potential. And I was correct, they're from 2003, but you can probably guess that just by the design of them. First thing I did was take out the insoles. These are not the original insoles. They're definitely 20 years old and they're crumbling. So they're going straight in the trash immediately bath time These look like they contracted COVID-20. Okay, realistically I think that these are yard work shoes because they got grass stains and dirt stains all over them I'm using refreshed sole cleaner and laundry detergent and lots of elbow grease just to get all this stuff out But hey, if the water looks like a beachfront in Houston, then at least you know that you did some work Sorry, no clip of me rinsing them, but best believe I got all that gulf water out of them So even though the shoes are now clean, they still look like Ronald McDonald because of the yellowing on the soles So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of experimenting this time. I have two high hydrogen peroxide based products on the right side i'm going to be using sally's beauty supplies 40 volume cream and on the left side i'm going to be using cck soul sauce which has a little more additives in it i'm going to give these at least four hours of sun exposure just to see if there's any difference in work and bam these switched back quicker than ariana grande could ever it looks like the products have had the same result but the cck has done just a baby bit better it works better for translucent soles like on jordan 11s because those need multiple sessions trust me i'm no scientist i actually failed all my science classes in high school but all i know is that this came from the computer community and it made its way into the shoe world those old 90s computers that look beige they're really supposed to be white so somebody found a way to do it with hydrogen peroxide i can't just leave one side oxidized so i'm going to do the inner side of the shoes and i only have a couple hours of sunlight left so let's see how well this works not to my surprise the hydrogen peroxide based products did their job i recommend you trying it on your yellowed air force ones you have nothing to lose so with used shoes you're always going to have the inner part of your heel all scuffed up it's usually paint and dirt but you can get this off with acetone i would also like to add the comments that i get on some of my videos like this well you spent three dollars on your shoes but two hundred dollars worth of labor and supplies blah 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 just buy some new ones look you little assholes fixing vintage shoes is something really unique and why do you think they keep releasing these old shoes because they obviously look the best the old releases have a much better shape and sometimes better quality so there's a whole reason why i do this but i'm pretty invested in my hobby so maybe that's also why but the shoes went from beaters to a, a little less beat looking but you know what i still consider a save in my book because i got them for really cheap and nike doesn't really do air force ones like this anymore so there's still a couple things that i'm not satisfied with i forgot to decrease them and they're also crumbling from the inside just like my life so stay tuned for a soul swap thank you so much for clicking on this video you guys i've been so obsessed recently with watching people restore their old shoes like i found it so unnecessary to go buy some new shoes and waste money and even harm the environment when you could find some beautiful kicks for cheap and restore them and they become as good as new these are air jordan 3s from 1994 they were most likely forgotten about left in somebody's attic and the polyurethane parts on these shoes turned to literal dust you may be thinking, why did I buy these crusty shoes? This is one of the first Jordans to re-release, and this is a very iconic and classic colorway. Unfortunately, every Jordan 3 has these back tabs that crack and fall apart over time. But the good thing is, these are replaceable along with the midsoles. I start by unstitching the toe cap. This makes prep work go smooth. I then use a heat gun to warm up any old glue and midsole residue. If you get hungry watching this, I don't blame you. My fat ass thinks it looks like cake and frosting. I do the same process to the outsole, and it comes off like butter. If you're a Gen Zer, don't get your hopes up. You can't eat this. We all remember the time. Tide Pods. The outsoles were not yellowed, but they were just dirty, and I hate dirty shoes, so CCK Soul Sauce, you know the deal, it reverses yellowing and penetrates dirt if you leave it in the sun. I left them out in the sun for about an hour, and it's time to clean them. Here I'm using Dawn Dish Soap, it works extremely well on your soles, don't be scared to use it, and I'm using wire brush because that's what works. You may be thinking, what's the point of cleaning the soles? These aren't white girl Air Force Ones, so they need to look clean. Right here I'm going to prep the glue line, I'm using acetone so I can get up the residual midsole and the glue. You want a clean surface before you re-glue. These are custom aftermarket 1994 back tabs, you can get these off of Jacecologist or Red Inside on Instagram. These replacement midsoles are from a 2018 pair of Jordan Legacy 312s, they'll last me quite a while. Uh, here I'm trying to test to see how they fit and just as I thought I ran into fitment issues new midsoles have a different mold So I have to result in using my dremel to hope that I can get the fit It's a tedious process, but there's no way I can get the rubber soles to line up if I don't do this now It's time to remove the old paint on the midsole I used acetone in a cotton ball and fortunately it came off pretty quick now after all that work I put into this midsole. I'm hoping that it will fit properly. I'm happy because it fits near perfect 
Now it's time to install my back tabs. I have to cut the stitching because there's some parts of the tab that's stuck underneath the elephant print. Next step is gluing. This is Bart Cement Infinity and you want to hit every spot where you can make a contact. Let it cure for about five minutes and then you stick it right on. This glue is made for plastics and vinyl so it works extremely well with shoes. Now I glue the outsole to the midsole. You can see that shaving it really helped. It fit almost perfect. I have to stitch the toe cap back together but I just made a bunch of fake ones. It's too much work to actually stitch it in the shoe. Yeah, I cut corners. Fight me. Now this is the most important step right here. I'm gluing the upper to the midsole. You want to make sure that it's not crooked when you install it. You also want to ensure that it adheres properly so you don't get any separations. So far, so good. And now the last step is to paint. I'm using Angelus Leather Paint. This is perfect for midsoles. I like to paint last because the wet glue can discolor the paint. Now, this was a really big project for a pretty special pair of shoes. So I'm really glad that I finished it because the shoes look clean. Who would have thought that those crusty ass shoes from the beginning look like this now? And to top it off, I had to match with an era specific outfit. The original version of these shoes came out in 1988. So it's only right to match that aesthetic. I'm going to consider myself a little bit lucky because at the thrift store, I found these Jordan 10s sitting on the rack. And since thrifting has become such a popular thing recently, the thrift stores have been marking up their Jordans like crazy. But these are only $15, and I think it's because of the condition that they're in. They look like they're at the point of no return. I would be an idiot if I passed up this price. Yes, they're from 2018, and yes, I almost strictly do vintage. But there are some exceptions, like finding some cheap retros that need some TLC. Anyway, these deserve a bath. I'm going to mix Angelus or Lincoln Easy Cleaner, and I'm going to mix some refreshed shoe cleaner just for the fuck of it. I want my shoes wider than an EDM remix to a Travis Scott song, so I'm going to put some shout in there. And laundry detergent because I like my shoes to smell good. Okay, so detergent versus shoe cleaner. I like to use detergent in a deep clean like this, but shoe cleaner is better for convenience. Like a small on-the-go spot scrub, shoe cleaner is much better for that situation. Because nobody can tell me what to do, I decided to mix both. Insoles, same treatment. You saw that dirty ass water. I don't trust these shoes. And I always finish with a thorough rinse. Now, you know what's a little bit crazy? Jordan 10s used to be an expensive model, but now they're dirt cheap. Every single colorway, they're always under $100. Used pairs, at least. All right now, so the soles are super pissy yellow. They look really ugly. I'm gonna reverse it with some hydrogen peroxide based products. I'm using CCK soul sauce, but you can also use Salon Care 40 volume and this will get the same results. Now, after about two hours, this is what my soles look like with the product on it after it's been exposed to UV rays, i.e. the sun. Upon further inspection, uh, I think some of the soul sauce leaked onto the leather and it burned through the leather. So I'm gonna fix it with my Dremel. A flat stone tip in this situation is perfect because I don't wanna grind too far into the material. Now, next step, I'm going to use my leather filler. This is called FC2 Soft Filler. This is originally made for vinyl seats and cars, but it works perfect for shoes because you'll see the outcome after I'm done with this. I let the soft filler dry for about a day, and now I'm going to use some sandpaper to grind it down. I'm using 600 and 1200 grit. I'm going to get it as smooth as possible, and then I'm going to finish it off with some acetone. It's painting time, so I'm going to add about three or four coats of Angelus leather paint, but the surface is still a little uneven, so I'm going to sand it down to get it flat again. Now, I'm a little unimpressed with the shade of white that I use. It's a little too bright and fluorescent. I'm going to mix it with some bone. This is another color offered from Angelus. This way, I can get the more natural tone of the leather. The midsoles on most Jordan 10s are not painted. They're made out of phylon, which is just one solid color, but they do collect a lot of dirt. So I'm going to use acetone to try to get out as much dirt as I can. Now, last and final step for my 10s is filling in the blemishes and the marks. I use Angelus leather paint again, and now my $15 pissy yellow Jordan 10s are as white as snow. And I'm also very impressed with my leather filler. It filled in the hole really good. Yeah, really good. Go look for 10s in your size on eBay right now. They're going for really cheap.